Lied to? Really? Well, kind of. You might have heard that it's the process of putting an image or a texture onto a 3D object. Now, in reality, what we're doing is we're unwrapping that 3D object and placing its vertices onto a 2D surface. Does this sound a little pretentious? Well, maybe a little bit. However, I believe getting the fundamentals right is critical to understanding the world of 3D. And by the end of this video, you're going to know those fundamentals you've already missed. So where did U and V actually come from? Well, if we have a look at our 3D world here, we already have, and I'm gonna poorly draw here, but we've got our X axis, our Y axis and our Z axis. And then we've got a coordinate system. So we can say that a particular vertex of a cube is one unit up, one unit across and one unit towards us. So in this case, this vertex at the very top corner just here, and we can see we've got X, Y and Z being up to the right and towards us. Now let's do it in the right order. We would go one unit along on the x-axis, one unit along on the y-axis, and one unit along on the z-axis. Now, even though my line doesn't line up properly, that vertex will have the coordinate one comma one comma one. So this is our coordinates in 3D space. Now we need to take that and project that vertex onto a 2D surface. X, Y, and Z are already taken. W is usually used for quaternions, so that leaves us with U and V. And we can find that over in the UV editing workspace just here. And foreshadowing for later, there's an unwrap over on the side here. And whenever you create a brand new Blender file, the default cube that appears in the middle is already unwrapped. Now I like using real life objects to demonstrate things, so let's have a closer look at what happens when you unwrap an object. Okay, so let's talk about unwrapping this cube. There are numerous ways in which we can do this. However, one of the common ones is to make some cuts in it and literally unfold it like this. In fact, this is the way that the default cube unwraps. Now what we've done here is we've unwrapped it and we've got these faces joined together, but we've also placed some cuts. Now these cuts are called seams over in Blender, and we'll cover those at a different point. And we can make them anywhere across our model. In fact, this isn't the only unwrap we can do. What we could do instead, and let's just move this to the side, is we could unwrap each face individually. These are all UV islands individually, six of them, and they represent a face or a set of faces joined together. In fact, in this particular case, if we join these two and these two and these final two together, we end up with three UV islands. In the original example, we have one UV island. And this is a really simple unwrap. They can get more complex. And what we've done here is we've projected each of these vertices and faces onto this 2D surface by unwrapping it like this. Now, if there was a particular reason to, we could decide that this face at the top should not be unwrapped like this, and we could place it over here instead. That's a perfectly valid unwrap. But enough of this real world malarkey. Let's hop back on over into Blender. So now we're back from the real world back into Blender. I do hope that that real world example actually demonstrates how straightforward unwrapping truly is, although it can get more involved later on. It's like a puzzle. If we go over from the layout workspace at the top here over to the UV editing workspace, we can have a look at the controls we end up using. So going over into the UV editing workspace, you do need to be in edit mode. That is critical, otherwise you cannot edit the vertices, edges, and faces. And that's what we're doing, but instead of doing it in the 3D world, on the right hand side, we're actually gonna do it over here in the 2D world instead, within the UV editor. So we have these faces mapped out, and in fact, we can grab these faces and move them around, or we can move vertices around as well. And you can see at the moment, this is actually joined together. If we go ahead and select a face, I'm gonna to go to face select and select an individual face, you can see that they appear individually, and you can edit them like this as well if you need to focus on a specific area. On the UV editor side, we've also got vertices edges, faces, and island selecting, but we also have synchronize selection. This is super useful as it allows us to see everything else that we've currently unwrapped and what we have selected on the model. This gives us an opportunity to see where on the UV map a particular faces in relation to the 3D model. And that is really critical if you're trying to paint on your model or apply textures, what orientation they are. And just as we did in the real world, we could actually grab this face. So by selecting it first, 
Notice that we've got face select and synchronize selection enabled. We can select these faces and move them around like so. How cool is that? And you can position those, imagining there's a texture in the background, you can position them over a specific part of the texture. Now, it is important here to note that if you have UV Sync on, you can do that. If you don't have UV Sync on, and let's just say we end up selecting faces again, at the moment only one selected, so we go ahead and select all by pressing A with our cursor over in the 3D view. Now if we go ahead and select this, notice the orange color coming out from this vertex here upwards. That means that that edge is also partially selected. So whereas before with the synced selection, we can just drag faces away from one another, this will actually drag the vertices of other faces away. It can end up just being a little bit distracting and it can end up distorting ones that you've already laid out. Now, before I finish off, I want to show you what a UV map actually looks like in terms of data. That's important, especially if you want to start doing procedural stuff with UVs. And that'll be the last thing we cover. So let's have a quick look at that. I'm going to delete my cube in the middle of the scene. Bye bye cube. In fact, I'm going to get rid of it at an object level instead. And I'm going to add in a plane. The reason why I'm going to do a plane is we can look down above and zoom in and in fact we need to be in a different workspace. I'm going to go to the shading workspace and do the exact same and look down. Now the colors won't be perfect straight away but if we go ahead and add a material to this and instead of adding a texture into this base color what we can do is we can drag out like so and search for texture coordinates. Now, ultimately, UV is a type of texture coordinate. So we can very clearly see here that if we have our, and I'm going to annotate here, that it'd be a lot easier for me to remember as well. Uh, we've got, that was a really rubbish U. So along this axis here, we've got a U, and up the top, we've got a V. And as you can see, the colors are mapped to the same colors that we're used to when it comes to X and Y. So as we move along this x-axis, and this is from 0 to 1, we start at black, no value in x or y, or u or v. And when we move along here, we get 100% of u, or 100% of v. And why is it yellow at the top? Well, one of the best places to show you this is actually the color wheel. If we have a look at the color wheel here. That's 100% green, that's 100% red. What happens if you mix 100% red and green? We get the yellow. Now you can go beyond the bounds of 0 to 1 when it comes to UVs and that typically only happens if you're repeating a texture and you just want to place a UV unwrap outside of that range just to make it clearer to work with. Okay, so that about wraps it up. I hope you've enjoyed this little dive into UVs and what they actually are. I'm gonna do more on UVs and there's even a course coming as well. So subscribe if you want to hear more about that. Like the video if you found it useful and I'll see you all in the next one. Blender.